Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I toast to you on this beautiful Saturday morning, and I wish that you have a great early harvest. Whatever you call this holiday, less to do. <clears throat> it's not really the early harvest. Tomorrow or the next day, depending on where you are or who, what, how you celebrate or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, I am brought notes today. We're going to talk about the early harvest. Uh, just to kind of go over some of the energy, I do want to start with talking about the name early harvest. Um, most people will call this holiday llamas. Um, it's the easiest, I guess, way term, word that we have in the pangan list of holidays celebrated at this time. Um, I call it the early harvest because I feel it's more closely related to the energy and the science of it. And since all of the pagan holidays can Hello, Sandpiper. <laughs> All of the pagan holidays can be attributed to a uh, shift in the earth and the, and the sun and the rotation and all that great just stuff. Um, early harvest just is really fitting. Uh, and for me, I call the holidays uh, winter solstice because that's where we start the year. So winter solstice, midwinter, the spring equinox, high spring. Uh, the summer solstice, the early harvest, <laughs> the fall equinox, and then the last harvest. Uh, so we'll go through kind of more as those holidays come around on all of that stuff. But today, the early harvest, or Lamas, or Lunasa, or we'll go over some other words that are other holidays that are celebrated through different cultures because all of those are related to a different culture um, <clears throat> so this is when we are harvesting wheat and grain this is when we are harvesting our summer fruits and vegetables you're getting zucchini and squash and those kind of things out of your garden um, but this is the early grain harvest so that's when we're celebrating that um, especially the further north you go more of those grain and harvest deities are celebrated like I said in the other video Lou sacrifices himself at this time as the uh, wheat and the grain ripen so that his energy can go there and he can be transformed so you're going to see a lot of that in different throughout different cultures that same kind of theme is going to happen the divine energy is going to sacrifice itself for those early grain harvests or the people are going to sacrifice something there's going to be some kind of giving in order for that fruit to ripen the crops to ripen and for the rest of our harvest to come to volition all that work to come through um, if we are talking about more of the wiccan cycle of the goddess and the god you have the goddess growing very round right now full with pregnancy um, the god is giving his energy for her and that is kind of beaming down and really filling her with that energy she is both excited that her um you know she's growing full with the child and she is also sad because she knows that soon it'll be time for her lover um, the god to pass and so <clears throat> it's kind of like a, a good and bad you know we are excited and happy that we are seeing all of these things come through um, but at the same time we know that with that it means the end of the cycle and so we'll have to make that transition um, so, like I said, the goddess is focusing on finishing her cycle. The god is helping by giving his energy and his stamina and his persistent energy. So that, that's what we feel. Um, here it's very warm outside. We're really feeling the sun, even though it is starting to decline. Uh, so at this point, if we went back into history, this would have been an exciting harvest because this is when you're running out of all of the food that you had stored from before. So, you know, you've been able to pick fruits and stuff throughout the summer, but you haven't had like a really good, fresh mm, deliciousness. Um, and so now as we come to that, this meal, this harvest meal would have been probably one of the most exciting times of the year because it would have been that first big harvest where you're getting all of those really ripe fruits and vegetables. Um, you're getting that bread, fresh bread for the first time. Uh, I imagine they had lots of other little treats like bread pudding and just different little things that they would be using with the grains to have fresh grains and have fresh food. Um, we're pretty spoiled in this modern world because we don't have to store our vegetables all throughout the year. We don't have to stockpile. We don't have to worry or move or migrate or do whatever. 
we have a grocery store, so it's really easy to just go and get and bring that home. But if you go back 2,000 years, that's not how it was. Even if there was a market, your market was very seasonal. You only got what you got. And come midwinter, there probably weren't a lot of markets open. And the markets that were were selling carrots and onions and potatoes and winter squash and things that keep through the summer and the winter. Um, so when it came time for this, you know, you're getting cakes and treats and sweet treats and things that you don't get because you don't have those fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so this would have been a really exciting time. This would have been a like, ah, oh, I can't wait. Um, and so when you tap into that energy, you feel that it just, mm, it's exciting. I'm excited to uh, pick some carrots out of my garden. Yesterday I picked my onions and laid them all out to dry for the day. The smell is amazing. It's just amazing. So it was just very exciting. And so that's exciting. Uh, and so if you are doing harvesting, it makes it a little bit easier to connect with that energy. If you're not, go out into the country where they are growing food and just watch. Look, walk around a field, walk around an orchard, go and look for those fruits that are coming and see the work that's happening and, you know, rejoice in that. And it just, yeah, so that's kind of where the energy is right now. It's very much in rejoicing that, oh my God, it's here. Finally, we've got some fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, I know that, whatever. So uh, this is also a time when we, you know, our ancestors were able to relax a little bit. You were able to, uh, we're going to eat some good food. We're going to take a little bit of a break. At this point, everything has been planted. It's just maintaining and making sure that we don't have a major problem hoping that we don't have a big drought, little things like that. But, you know, you're not planting, you're not focused on weeding, you're not, you know, trying to maintain, like trying to build. Now you're just trying to maintain to make it through to the final harvests. Uh, and so, you know, it's that time to begin to enjoy the things that we have. Uh, this is also when you start to notice the shift in the Earth's energy when okay so now it's time to finish up now you'll start to see more of the animals and stuff start to focus more on storing and preparing you'll see the plants start to transition um, and so for some people that triggers a little bit of mania because the earth is excited the earth is like this underground oh let's get ready for our winter let's store let's process let's prepare let's do that the animals are doing that hibernating animals are going out and they're foraging and getting as much food as they can uh, you know, everybody's trying to figure out where the animals live so that way when winter comes, the, you know, the fox can find the chickens or the, okay, I say that, but that's probably not what people want to hear. Uh, but really, the fox will find the bunnies and the, just the little things and we'll all go around and all of the animals are making those preparations. The plants are making those preparations. They're starting to store that energy back down. They're starting to transition and so we as people feel that as this buzzing energy underground and I think some people can get a little anxious from that and it can make them feel like they need to do something. Um, I get calls from people who are like my mania is really bad right now I feel like I'm missing something what is it and I'm like well you're not missing anything you're just not connecting with that earth energy and that's where the earth's energy is right now so just connect with it utilize it to do things and get things done and be productive this is a great time to like make a list here are the things i need to do to finish these projects and then the earth's energy will help you find that motivation to get those things done um, so that's a great thing to do right now for the energy magic wise mm, excuse me uh, this is another time when we uh, put aside some seeds and we bless them and we say thank you for next year and we start making those storing those things so um, you can metaphorically do this by saving say you're eating a watermelon you can save some of those seeds um, and you can bless them and you can put them aside and as a sympathetic magic for new prosperous beginnings come next year um, finding new love next year would be good for the watermelon specifically um, finding self-love even better uh, but you know just different kind of seeds can emphasize specific things on what you're trying to go through if you're looking to have a protective year use the pumpkin if you're looking to have a prosperous year use some dill seeds or not dill um, some basil seeds uh, if you're looking for some good luck you could use the dill um, but so there's just gonna that's a good 
magical thing that you can do for some sympathetic magic if you are gardening. I am collecting real seeds. I've got lettuce seeds I've collected. I'm waiting for my red lettuce seeds to turn into seeds all the way. I've got my onion seeds almost ready. So I'll begin collecting those and uh, doing some little bit of blessing so that next year they grow and big and I have a fruitful harvest. Uh, and then, so let's see, what else for magic? Um, oh yeah, so this is also a time when they would do the Wicker Man. Um, so you look online, you see Wicker Man, huge. This is like a big deal in other countries. Um, we don't get that blessing here um, because, I mean, unless you go to Burning Man, but it's not during this time, blah, 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 all that stuff. Anyways, social distancing right now. Yeah. So the Wicker Man is a giant man made, um, and I don't know how true this is. I question a lot of the graphic things that they say about pagans. I don't doubt, I, okay, I wouldn't put it past our history, but I don't know the whole whatever. So there are tales written of the Wicker Men. All the bad people in the town would be put into the Wicker Men, and then they would burn the Wicker Men, and they get rid of all the bad stuff. Um, <laughs> literally. And I imagine that might have happened. I'm not against getting rid of people who can't be rehabilitated. You know, some people are just bad. <laughs> but, uh... I think on a more modern term, where we're not going to be sacrificing people, uh, this is a good time to sacrifice the things that are no longer serving you. So, you know, we all have trauma from childhood, we all have coping mechanisms, there are things that we've all done in order to maintain and become who we are, uh, but they're not always useful for us. Um, being scared of the dark, I'm just using that as a very generic thing because I don't want in whatever. So. Being scared of the dark, something as a child that you use to help you stay safe and feel safe, but as a grown-up, okay, it's time to move past that. So you write it on a piece of paper and you put it in your wickerman. Um, I make my wickerman out of twigs that we find. Well, the first year we did it kind of accidentally happened, but my youngest sister, who I'm 20 years senior to, uh, and I were sitting next to the fire. Um, having our bonfire and enjoying ourselves and she just started picking up little twigs off the ground and was like playing with them and one of them kind of looked like a body and so we just kind of made our own little look wickerman and then we had this great moment around the fire with everybody where we got to talk about it and how ironic and magical it was that she did this on the early harvest and so we all kind of said we whispered to the wickerman the things that we wanted to release we threw it in the fire it was only like this big it was cute but now we kind of carry on that tradition and so when we make a wicker man it's just out of twigs that we find this year because we're having a lot of transitions as a coven we will be putting things that we're ready to release as a group into there um, and then we'll be releasing that into the world uh, and looking for a change and something new and to release the old and so that's where that's part of the energy of this holiday is looking at taking stock of what you have making plans for the future getting rid of the things you don't need we always talk about spring cleaning but this is a great time to start that fall cleaning you should also do a fall cleaning where you do the same thing that you do in the spring you just do it before winter to make your house ready for that winter energy um let's see so Again, this is a great time to give stock. Um, something that you can do as a family, if you've got kids, is everybody make their favorite dish or bring their favorite food. Even the kids can gather the apples or the treats or the whatever is their favorite. My son loves the winter squash, so he'll be excited that we're having the last of last harvest winter squash to this year, or this holiday, so he'll bring that. That'll be his, like, ah, oh, yes. But everybody bring their favorite food to the table and bring it together because that's what we're doing. We're all bringing our talents and our skills and our things together um, to share with the community and our family and giving thanks for the things that we have and sharing our skills and talents all at the same time. So this can be done by bringing your favorite food is just a good way to symbolize that. Um, we've had years where everybody had to bring their skill. So if you played an instrument, you had to bring your instrument. If you wrote, you brought your story. If you sang, you sang for us, whatever it was. Um, and that was to honor Lou as a master craftsman and his journey and like his 
like his week, I guess. So we all brought our own skills and talents and showed them off and we're like, this is what we have. Um, this was a great time ancestrally when they would do that, they would get together and have big markets in some community, in some cultures. They would get together and have big markets and bring all of their stuff together. And they're like, look at all this stuff that I've been working on all year and let's share and exchange and all of that stuff. Um, so this is a time when we kind of celebrate that commerce. We celebrate bringing things together, community, all of that kind of stuff. Um, as like a solo ritual, if you're looking for that, you can uh, fill a cornucopia with fruits and vegetables. Um, and then uh, I just put, we, we're trying to get this up for the Iowa Pagan News, uh, but maybe I'll share the link. I think I talked about this the other day. Anyways, fill a cornucopia with fruits use those fruits to then make a smoothie as you're doing this whole process really think about and process and internalize all of the things that you are thankful for and that you are proud of and that you want to encourage that growth more in yourself to encourage that self-love and then you drink your smoothie and you meditate it's also going to be the full moon which is a great time to you know call on that mother moon and have her bless you and remind you of all of those good things and encourage that self-love so um let's see corn gods gods of the earth um solar gods are honored at this time mother father aspects uh, harvest deities, grain gods, all of those kind of gods are honored at this time uh, and are either sacrificed to or are sacrificing themselves and we are being thankful for that. So it's just kind of that, like I was saying earlier, that sacrifice thing. Um, let's see, some foods. Let's, okay, here we go. Let's get down to the good part. Let's talk about some myths and traditions around the world and then we'll finish up because it looks like I am running a long video. So... <laughs> And the dog says he's done. Merv, come here. All right, so the Anglo-Saxon celebrated loaf mass, um, what we call Lamas. I'm pretty sure the, oh no, that's my bone. Anyways, okay, so Lamas means loaf mass. It falls on August 1st. It is the festival of wheat harvest. Um, they made bread and from the freshly cut wheat. Um, like I was saying, this is probably like the most the best bread of the whole year and everybody was really excited for um and then this is a big time when we break bread you don't eat by yourself you come together as a community you get your friends together the tradition of breaking bread is literally you and another person hold the bread and break bread so you should be breaking bread with another person um and oh let me put the dog inside He's such a big whiny pibble. Anyways, okay, so the loaf mass was all about eating bread and coming together as a community and sharing it out. Um, this is also, let's see, it is also written in the Anglo Saxon Chronicles that this is the feast of first fruit, so that early harvest, like we're talking about, it's the same kind of thing. Um, and so they celebrated all of those things that they were getting and harvesting and enjoying. Let's see. So then if we go a little bit further north, we have the Scotland. Um, and they would also make a bread. They would make it with the freshly picked uh, bilberries. And this was a, if you didn't have a lover already, you would make this bread and you would offer it as a bring a lover to me and that kind of thing about, again, coming together, making bread, using those fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, in North mythology, this holiday is connected to Freyr and the god of fertility and agriculture. And again, this is uh, oh, see, I'm running out of ink. Anyways, so this was celebrated by honoring his skills. He was a master of uh, horse races and martial arts and just kind of that thing combat. And so this was honored at that time, and they would honor him as that for you know, fertility and agriculture and that strong male uh, masculine energy. And we're really honoring that now as its height and its power and it's not that fiery burning energy of a youthful man, but the wise, mature energy of a skilled craftsman and a skilled warrior and a skilled, ag you know, farmer and all of these things 
all of these trades so that we're honoring that energy and it's not just the gods you know we honor minerva at this time and we honor cirrus cirrus the green goddess soul the green goddess we're honoring all of these gods and goddesses at this time who have really helped in that thing uh, so in Sumerian lore, the god Tammuz, probably saying that way wrong, but whatever, is honored at this time. Also a grain god. Um, he is honored with Ishtar. Um, and they are together uh, honored for providing our bountiful harvest. Um, so again, he will soon pass. Um, he is, is, I think, on the equinox. But he will pass, and then Ishtar will grieve, and that is why winter comes. And so that's kind of where that transition and cycle comes. Um, the ancient Roman goddess Salus was honored at this time. She is an agricultural goddess. Um, and her feast was actually on August 3rd, so that's what I said. Not every culture is going to celebrate it at exactly the same time, because it does depend on how far north or south you are on when you saw the transition of this time uh, <clears throat> it's not like an equinox or a solstice where this is an exact time and we can mark it with the you know the angles of the earth and the sun these ones are more of a gestation of the energy uh, so and then in greek mythology adonis is honored at this time he is that god of the agriculture um, and again he is a resurrection god and so he is connected to persephone and the myrrh tree um, so the goddess of aphrodite saw him born and fell in love with him and she refused to give him back because she just wanted him for herself so since the goddesses were fighting over this baby Zeus came down and said, for half of the year he can live here in the upper world, and half of the year he can live in the underworld. And so that's where his transition comes. Um, so he's another one of those gods that sacrifices himself to come back and to go between the worlds. Um, in medieval Welsh, there is some clergy who make reference to the Feast of August. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Gaelic word. Um, but this is when we honored our talents. This is where Lunasa comes from, um, where we are talking about the god Lu, um, and he is part of the Tuatha de Danann, and, uh, you know, he dies and sacrifices himself to come back. Uh, this is also a time when holy wells were visited. Um, we're honoring that water because it's hot outside, and we really want to make sure we don't have droughts. So you would have gone and honored that water that has nurtured and nourished you through the winter, and also asked for not to be a harsh winter because you have to keep in mind that water is part of what brings in that harsh winter. So you would have, you know, please, water, don't curse us with a bad winter. Um, let's see, going around the world. So, in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, so technically right now in the Southern Hemisphere, they're actually celebrating midwinter, but if it were in February and they were celebrating the early harvest, this is a time when they would have, uh, for the Inca this month was called Hatun Pukoi. Uh, and this is a time when the first potatoes were harvested. Uh, so if you didn't know, potatoes come from South America. And this is when they would have gone up. Uh, and potatoes, are they have a very interesting history. But they would have gone and harvested all of their potatoes. Then they would have taken all of their poisonous potatoes. Because potatoes were originally poisonous. And they would have taken them up high, high, high into the mountains. Where they would have freeze-dried dried them. And that process of freeze drying would have actually made them edible. So that was part of this harvest is that they would harvest all of the potatoes. Then they would carry the potatoes up high into the mountains. Um, and then they would freeze dry them. And then they would, because uh, it gets really cold right at this time of year up from that high of an elevation. And then they would come and dig them up and they would bring them back down. And then they would have potatoes um, for the year. Uh, so this is when they would celebrate that. Um, and they would do different ceremonies and stuff to honor that potato harvest. Uh, so 
really all around the world this is a time when we are harvesting we are enjoying that harvested energy we are honoring mother earth we are honoring the sun for the energy that he bestows and we are taking you know taking presence of what's going on around us what we have what we need what we need for the future what we don't need and we're making those transitions so that each year when we make this so if you think about it if each year when this time comes you make a list here are all of the things I want to do here are all of the things that I want to get rid of and you make those two lists and then you harvest those things here are the things I need to get done and before the last harvest I'm gonna get these things done and here are the things that I love about myself that I want to grow for myself that I want to prosper in for the next year and here are the things that I need to let go of and then that gives you from the early harvest to the equinox to the last harvest to actually do those things and to release this energy and to grow the things you need to grow and and make those things happen that way when we get to the last harvest and it's time to turn introspectively and to look inward we, we can look inward. I've let go of those things I finished those things I'm gonna move forward with these things the things that I couldn't let go of I'm gonna think about and then when you come through to the early you know, to Yule in the midwinter and then into the equinox, we are blossoming these new energies, these better things, this more prosperous, better self, you know, better understanding of ourselves. And so each year as we transition through this, we become a better person. We have a better environment. We have a better everything because remember it's not just one aspect it's all aspects of self that you need to look at so this video has gotten very long i hope that everybody has a blessed lunasa lamas early harvest Fryfax, loaf mass candle mass whatever you call it i hope that you are blessed with the sight to see all of the beautiful things about yourself I hope that you are able to let go of the things that are holding you back. And I hope that you find the motivation to get all of the things done that you need to get done. So I hope that everybody has a blessed harvest. Um, I probably will make a short video tomorrow, maybe with a little blessing or something. Um, before my day starts, we are going to have some, I'm going to have two people over. We're still practicing our small gatherings. <laughs> But I hope everybody has a blessed day um, and don't forget to like and subscribe and come back and see me. We'll see you guys soon.